My name is Mr. Mighty Mouse, and we'll be running Celeste SMC. It is a mod of Super Mario World that's made as a loving tribute to Celeste. It's got all the wonderful dashes and wall jumps you've come to expect, plus a lot of the levels that you'll find relatively familiar to the OG game. So um, before we get started, do y'all want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Mark Alarm, and I'm the developer of this uh, fan game. I spent the uh, past three years working on this. Fantastic. Uh, hi, I'm Frozen Flygon. I am both a Celeste speedrunner and a Super Mario World Kaizo player, and I absolutely adore this game. It's going to be amazing. All right. If we are ready to get started, time starts on selecting Mario A, so let's count it down. Three, two, one, go! So the premise of this game, as you heard, is it's a tribute to Celeste, and it takes all of the mechanics, uh, like the dash, like the wall jump, and implements them into Super Mario World. And you're going to be seeing Mr. Mighty Mouse flying through these levels with the dash, because in Super Mario World, uh, there's a speed mechanic where if you hold a direction, um, you get your speed locked. But with this dash, if you let go of the D-pad, you're going to keep all of that mm -hmm. speed. And you're just going to watch Mr. Mighty Mouse fly through the level with all that speed. Absolutely. And as you can see, you also can jump off of walls, which is not standard for Super Mario World. And those two mechanics really make it feel so unique as a mod. Yeah, and one of the differences between this and Celeste is a, the levels aren't necessarily a one-to-one -one recreation. Um, there's a lot of blending between Celeste and Super Mario World so that they work in cool. sync. And another thing is that the wall climb mechanic from Celeste isn't in Super Mario World, and that's because it didn't really feel that good with the Mario engine. So I only implemented the two. And that's already the first there's level. City. Great job. There we go. <laughs> and now would be a, quick time, a good time for a quick donation. A yeah, quick donation. How about this? We have Ken XKO donates $100, and they say, that was amazing. I always loved GDQ, and this was just amazing. Uh, amazing. <laughs> Put this towards the FFX laughing cutscenes. Oh, yeah. I love Blitzball. We still have $26,000 till we hit that. I'd like to see that, I don't know, maybe in the next two hours? I don't know. <laughs> Now we're into old site, and if you've played Celeste before, you know that you have these mechanics called a dream block, where if you dash into it, you're going to get your dash back coming out of it in the same direction. The interesting thing about it in this is that if you up right or up left into a dream block, you're going to kind of glide along the ceiling and jump out of it, which is pretty interesting, and you can see Mouse using that throughout. And the other pretty major mechanic uh, that gets introduced in this level but continues in the rest of the game is these on-off blocks. Mm -hmm. um, where they're based off of the rhythm blocks that are in Celeste when you go into a cassette room or in the B-side. Um, but it felt better in Super Mario World to have these on-off switches be used as permanent uh, state changes. And you can't really see much of it, but uh, we do have a little battle and stand-in here. But Mouse is going so fast, <laughs> you just absolutely can't see it. <laughs> we, we don't want her to catch up. No. So. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, trailing player is a cosmic clone, and that's taken from Super Mario Galaxy. And it felt like a pretty good uh, tie-in with Celeste. Mm -hmm. And unlike Celeste, where you know you get a checkpoint every single screen, you have to physically collect the checkpoint here. And so you've seen Mouse skipping some of them when it's important, but it's also you know helpful to make sure for marathon safety to be collecting those checkpoints. And just like that, we're already out of level two. Great job. There we go. And now would be a good time for another quick donation. Sure, yeah, we have a very generous $250 donation from KT who says, come on, SGDQ, I think we could all use a little more laughter. Let Titus show us how it's done. Awesome, thank you so much. <laughs> now we're heading into Resort, which is a kind of a step up in difficulty in both Celeste and this game. Yeah, the, this level in the fan game uh, was uh, the stopping point for a lot of people's first playthroughs. Uh, this game was taken pretty well by the Celeste community, where a lot of people that have never played these Mario World fan games before were picking it up. And they got through the first two levels without much trouble, but then they get to a trick that you'll <laughs> see later in this level that really stumped people up and got people stuck. Yeah, absolutely. And here we're going through kind of the little huge mess section. Can take a few different paths through here. And an important thing about this section is that Mouse actually has an extra key right now where he shouldn't, 
but he's just going to smuggle the key all the way through and skip having to go to an entire right section. Yeah. Easy little huge mess skip. Little, little huge mess skip. <laughs> This section's really fun. You got a lot of cycles you got to deal with. These on-off switches, grabbing this throw block. It's just a lot of amazing movement you can do with the dash here and keeping the momentum like we talked about earlier with neutraling the D-pad. I just love this section. It's just so much fun. Great job with that. And right here, Mouse is going to be going for a pretty tight jump between these spikes and dashing through there. That's, that's a really tight jump, and it saves having to go. Yeah. <laughs> Having to go grab a shell and throw it, have it bounce around and land on it. Unlike in Celeste, these spikes are rude and have some really rude hitboxes. And here's Ooh. the infamous disco shell. This is another rude <laughs> obstacle. This was the major stumbling point for most people's first mm -hmm. playthroughs. Also, there's a shell down there, but we don't really need it. Mouse is just going to kind of throw it away because I didn't design this very well. So he's just going <laughs> to skip it without a problem. Oh. But yeah, the concept, we're just going to grab this spring, use our dash, and uh, get it back and kind of sneak up in here. But there's also an alternative you can do here to a little safety there. And just like that, he's going to be wrapping up through the very end of Resort. So just going to bounce on some Koopas, grab some dash crystals, grab the uh, gold tape, and we're done. Whoop. There we go. And that'll be another good time for a quick donation. Absolutely. JR wins again, donates $50, and says to Mark Alarm, from mom, dad, uncle, and aunt, congratulate, oh. aw, congratulations on your achievement. We're so proud of you, your work, and your dedication to the community. Make sure you press the button. And at Mr. Mighty Mouse, thank you for supporting the game and grinding the route. Good luck on your run. Aw. Yeah! Thank you so much. Aww. To all my uh, family and friends that are watching at home, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being so supportive over the past few years with me working on this. It means the world to me. That's so sweet. And here we are in the Golden Ridge. And so there's a lot of new mechanics here. We have clouds, which are kind of, they're going to not only give you your dash back, if you press jump, that's when they're going to give you extra height. And we also have bubbles, which go in a certain spe specified direction. And we have everyone's favorite mechanic, wind. Yeah, the wind in this game uh, changes pretty frequently in this section specifically. Oh, oh that's oh, a bad no. <laughs> Um But we actually are able to use the wind to our advantage in a way where we're able to neutral off of the wall, where in this fan game, uh, when you do wall jumps... Oh, that was I a save, really good save. save. <laughs> Try to get me again. Yep. So you just saw right there, uh, Mouse was bouncing up the wall and staying on it. Uh, normally, you're not supposed to do that in this game because I want to force like different setups. But in the original Celeste, you're able to do that. So I kind of wanted to emulate that by using the win. And it kind of works out uh, in this section. Absolutely. And you could have seen the, you saw the crystal heart for a hot minute. Uh, this is any percent, so we're just going to be going through Summit. But you do need to collect crystal hearts to be able to get into Farewell. This goes all the way to Core and Farewell. So. Also, you might have just missed it, but Mouse actually went under the level. Yeah. <laughs> and there was actually another point where he did that to save a little bit of time. Uh, the, they're called limbos in this game, where you're kind of limboing under the level. There's another one? There's another one. <laughs> and this section has a lot of skips because the wind is pushing you uh, towards the right side of the screen. And if you're letting go of the D-pad, you're going to maintain all of your speed. And there's another limbo. I'm just like, oh, yeah, he's going to go over there. And then just, no, there's nothing at the oh. bottom of the screen. Oh. We're just going to go down there. That's all right. That's all right. We get to show it off again. <laughs> every time it gets me, it gets me every time we got a, ref, a cool reference to 4c here and then oh the first pipe first all, right. Pipe. all right here's going for a frame perfect trick and it just immediately gets it he's easy game all right <laughs> wants to bounce off the shell midair and gets it first try like it's absolutely nothing I love that level. It was, it was really challenging, but such a really rewarding level when you get through it, especially that ending. It, that might be my favorite speedrun section, minus one. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So now we're in Mirror Temple, and in the original Celeste speedrun, what you, some of you may have seen yesterday was they went to the B-side of this level in order to save a bit of time. But I didn't want to make B-sides for this game because that would have taken me another year to develop. So instead, we're going to just take a little bit of a shortcut here. And I dubbed it Bub's Climb after <laughs> the skip that's done in 5B called Bub's Drop. 
where I wanted there to be some sort of big skip and mirror temple without having to design an entire extra level. So it kind of just works out that way, and he's going to skip a two whole checkpoints by doing that. Absolutely. Shout outs to Bubai from the Celeste community <laughs> for that. <laughs> And this is a great section for donations, kind of just have a lot of uh, quick movement, so you can get a few in here. Sure. Maddie Thorson donates $500. Oh, Maddie. And they say, wait, that's not Madeline. That's it, that's the comment. <laughs> Thank you, Maddie. Thank you to Spanish Meerkat for your $10 donation. Love Mario and Celeste. Awesome to see a fusion between them both. Donation goes to the bonus game. And thank you to Jackal Travel, who donates $25. Let's go, Mighty Mouse. Keep kicking butt. Is now a good time for a dance party? Hmm. We are in 5B, so I would say yes. Anonymous donates $10. That Ocarina of Time run was one of the coolest, legitimately touching things I've seen at a GDQ. Incredibly well done. Got time for one more? Bobby donates $25. Never thought a speed one would make me ugly cry. That Zelda ending was amazing. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Also, all those spikes are fake there. They're just there to fake you out. I was scared. I was nervous when I fell down there. <laughs> we got Theo. We got everyone's favorite friend. So in this section, uh, there's a lot of unintended strats here. We're going to be taking Theo and doing a lot with him in ways that I didn't expect uh, when I was designing this originally. We're going to kind of go under this uh, set of on-off blocks here. Um, Got to get through that. And the de there's actually an invisible death plane where you actually can't bring Theo below the level. Uh, here, he's Mighty Mouse is going to do a skip, oh. which barely misses it, where you want to try to throw Theo three times on that on-off uh, blocks above you. But we're going to only try to do that once because it saves time. Yeah, absolutely. These strats are really difficult uh -huh. to maneuver Theo because it's kind of an awkward uh, throwable in a way. But Theo's just trying his best, you know? It, some of these are very, very precise skips, so dying once or twice here and there is absolutely, is, isn't that bad. They're very, very hard. This is definitely a run killer section in runs, but now you get to see the intended way. Hmm. <laughs> Got a little Theo chuckle there. Oh, oh too bad. It should also be noted, all the uh, all the Celeste runners that hate D-pad, all of this is on a 30-year-old D-pad, so... <laughs> yeah, it's pretty common in the Mario World Kaizo community that no player has a good D-pad. Again. <laughs> no player has a good D-pad, none of them work, and it's this, hack, or this game has been dubbed that the D-pad check, where everything, you need to make sure that you have the correct inputs, Otherwise, it's not going to be a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Especially because you actually do the dash with your oh. shoulder button. So it's kind of untraditional in terms of other Kaizo hacks. But this probably could be a good time for a donation. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Partial Fiddle donates $50. They say, we've loved watching AGDQs and SGDQs for years. And this year is no exception. Love seeing all the runners and the hype crowd in chat. There we go. Let's break some GDQ record <laughs> donations. And we have another one here. Ferrovax donates $250. Always glad to spend a week watching GDQ. Let's see if we can crack 3 million. Hi, Yoshi. Oh. So right there, Mouse was going for a skip where he's going to try to, he was trying to take a blue shell into this part of the level, which I half intended. Um, there's a little bit of spoilers, but if you grab the blue shell, you're able to fly up and grab a crystal heart. But I didn't think they'd be able to take the blue shell with you. So he would have been able to just fly through the level, but has to do it in the intended way. Goodbye, and Yoshi. now we leave Yoshi and Theo behind. To... <laughs> They're going to get out together. Oh, they'll, yeah, figure they'll, they'll, out, get, right? they'll figure it out. I think so. And now would be another good time for a quick donation or Absol two. Absolutely. The, no, okay. Um, Brutal's mom donates $100 and says, yeah, I know. No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted. Aesop, great job hosting, Brutal Mello. Love, Mom. Aww. Aww, yeah! I love you too, Mom. And yeah, now we're into reflection, so you get to see a lot of new sprites here, including feathers. So we talked about the D-pad, so the feathers are just gonna go in the direction of the D-pad. I actually really loved how the feathers worked in this game. Ooh, oh that was my so god, cool. that was a really good skip. Oh, that you he wanna just explain did. how that works, Mark? Yeah, so the feathers in this game are kind of weird because 
uh, in the original Celeste, you have the option of using a joystick, and that gives you analog control. But with a 30-year-old video game, you only get uh, eight cardinal directions, um, up, down, left, right, and diagonals. But the way I implemented this was if you tap the D-pad, your angle changes ever so slightly, and you're able to fly at a really precise angle in order to skip getting one of the Kevin blocks. It's I think only a couple of frames that you're able to get that. Yeah, so. that was really cool because you're just you're not going in the in the eight directions. So we also have the Kevin sprite here, uh, named after the sound designer from Celeste. And so you have to dash into it, and it'll take you across. You gotta go 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 alongside it or break obstacles with the Kevins. And there was another precise skip that Mouse just did, where it's a three frame window, but you're trying to he tried to. Uh, fly under some on-off blocks, and that not only skips having to go around and doing this whole extra thing, but it skips having to come into this section with the on-off switches in the opposite state, so it saves a little bit of time. And here is a good example of why solid sprites are garbage. You can just go right <laughs> through a wall. <laughs> Walls are meant to be broken. Yeah, solid sprites in Super Mario World are fairly janky, so... You can kind of just clip through walls with Kevin. Sometimes you can dash through them. I don't know. I didn't really program them that well. It's fine. <laughs> and now would be a good time for another probably quick donation or two. Sure. How about this? Anonymous donates $2,000. Oh. And they say, I quote, and they say, no comment. <laughs> Thank you. Probably got time for one more. Yeah, absolutely. Beehives donates ten dollars and says, "Here's some money." <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for the money. <laughs> so I've mentioned my favorite part of the speed run. It's this. It's the oh. battle line fight, hands down. The song shift from from hearing six A to six B alongside the background and just how smooth this battle line fight feels when you're playing this for the first time and in the speed run is just unparalleled. It's amazing. Yeah, and designing and designing this was actually one of my favorite parts to develop as um, as I was going along with making this fan game, and it was really interesting to go through some uncharted territory with making a boss fight like this because in Super Mario World most bosses only take up one screen and there's no checkpoints you have to beat it all in one go, that and this kind of not only. A, you get checkpoints mid-boss, which is something that's never really been done before, but it's also taking up an entire level. Yeah, it's absolutely incredible the coding work that's that's gone into this, the custom mechanics, custom sprites. Can, can we get a shout out to Mark for this just incredible game? It's just amazing. Speaking of shout outs, this was originally supposed to be a race with Graham Pooh Bear, so we have to do something in his honor. Oh, no. no. We can go back. That's, oh, there, oh, there he is. is. Yes, okay. <laughs> we have to do this. It's what Graham Pooh Bear would have wanted. Bye, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, that baby Yoshi, I kind of just put there because I thought it was funny. And that's really the only reason it exists. <laughs> I just wanted it to be there, hang out, have a good time. That uh, little bounce section was inspired by a really popular Celeste mod called Monica's D-Sides. And I absolutely loved how it was integrated in that section. You'll notice we're skipping about half of this entire section each time. Oh, okay. Doing another limbo, <laughs> go right into the stage. And just carrying the momentum off of Badalyn is really impressive here, and just using the dashes at exactly the right time to get to her as fast as possible. It's just really incredible. We have one final pretty hard trick right at the end of this section. There we oh, go. Oh, he gets it. First try. Great Not time. a problem. Yeah, skipping that ball and chain is very tight, so he got it first try. It's pretty impressive. Now we just got to chain all these hits on Battlein without a floor. And, no. oh, no. <laughs> the, the only troll in this game. <laughs> it's good every time. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to have a little bit of fun with making this and troll people, so at the very end, if you hit Battlein one more time, it just destroys the floor. And that's kind of a reference to at the end of... Uh, reflection in Celeste. Um, you're kind of becoming friends again with Battle and and, at the, and trying to hit her at the very end isn't very nice. So <laughs> I killed the player for it. Yep. You, 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 on, you only get out of that level by, by refusing to fight her at the end, which is uh, pretty on point. And here we are in the summit. And 
This is going to recap basically every level that we've seen so far, but now we have two dashes. So you can see that when you have two dashes, you look like Luigi. Uh, and instead of having it be pink, it's, uh, it's green. And you want to kind of explain that? Sure. So th the green was kind of two parts, really. One of them was the fact that I tried to make Mario have a pink hat, but when I looked at it on a CRT and on a monitor when I was developing this, the pink didn't look very good in my opinion, so I said, okay, I want to have a more distinct color. So I took inspiration from the Celeste Classic on the Pico 8 and noticed that Madeline had uh, alternating green and white hair instead of just pink. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, well, green is also Luigi, so that's a nice little reference, and went with that. And another thing that I actually did in this that you're not going to get to see is there's a section in this game that actually uses three dashes, and that uses the white hat instead of mm -hmm. green. Yeah, I love that reference back to Celeste Classic. There we go. Yes, I love that. Also, Miles just did a pretty huge skip where he dashed through a one-tile gap of spikes that when I placed them originally, I had no idea what use it could possibly had or have. So I just said, oh, I'm just going to put this here and see what happens. And it leads to actually pretty significant skip in that section. So works out pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've talked all week about devs that are appreciative of speedrunners. And there's nothing like a developer just being like, I'm going to put this here and someone's <laughs> going to go fast, right? Yeah, surely something will work out. <laughs> We might have time for one quick donation. Yeah, absolutely. Grega donates $200 to Doctors Without Borders, and they say, for the people. <laughs> That's right, we're here together, for the people. Thank you so much. So we're gonna be seeing a few more limbos here. We're skipping a bunch of red bubbles. Just a few. Just, we're just a gonna few. go under the screen twice in a row. Yeah, no problem at all. And uh, we're also going to collect a strawberry here, where it's actually right in the path of the most optimal way to get through for any percent. So we don't get to collect uh, any other strawberries, but they're in this game too, and you can collect them and have a good time with them. So I'm glad that it actually is able to make a showcase in any percent. Yeah, absolutely. I loved both the finding the crystal hearts and the strawberries in this had a lot of replay value for the player. And here we are in 3K. We're almost at the end. Yeah, this is the really the final climb, and we're going to be done with this run pretty soon. We just have one more uh, quick section to go. Yep, the final climb. <laughs> I love just all the references to the base game here. You can just you can, you can just see it. I, you just recognize the different parts of it. It's amazing. And there's a pretty special sprite coming up. There are actually two of them, but. I need to get the audience to get a nice little orb. orb. And time's going to be coming up as soon as Mouse enters the credits. And, and that's time. time. There we go. Wow, fantastic. I just want to say, while the credits roll, a uh, shout out to Grand Pooh Bear, who unfortunately couldn't be here because this was supposed to be a race. Uh, shout out to Mark for making this amazing game. Uh, shout out to the SMW and Celeste communities. Y'all have both been amazing, incredible people. Uh, do y'all have anybody you want to shout out? Um, everyone that's in the credits has done a lot of work on this, and not only myself, but a bunch of other people in the community. Um, also, especially special thanks to my family that's at home watching and all of my friends. They mean the world to me, and I love you all so much. And thanks for being as supportive as you have been. Absolutely. I wanted to say thanks to the two of you for having me. This was a, an absolute joy to be here as both a Celeste player and a Mario player. This is just the perfect fusion of everything I love in video games. And thank you so much. All right, here we go. <laughs> wow. Wow. Give it up for Mr. Mighty Mouse, everyone. We have a $50 donation from Naomi Uyama, who says, love you, Mike. And I hope this message is read and mildly embarrassing. 
We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. I want to remind you all you're here and you're, now, you're at home watching Summer Games Done Quick 2022 powered by Twitch. Having a great time. We have a donation from Kevin at Powered Up Audio for $250. And they say Celeste's sound designer here. Everything about this is amazing and I love you all. The rearranged music especially is just wow. Killer job, Mark. Flygon jam. Oh yeah, Flygon emote in the chat. Let's get it. GDQ will return in just a moment. Welcome back, welcome back. Don't you think about going anywhere. We have a daily recap coming up. And then after that, we have the Super Mario World Relay Race with some of the top names in the game. I hear some cheering, yeah, give it up, give it up. Some of the top names in the game. And then everyone's favorite fun-loving Frozen Flygon will be joining us as your host and taking over for me as the voice of the event. Once again, my name has been Brutal Mello. Thank you for being a part of this memory. Hey, I love you too. Thank you for being a part of this memory with me. Thank you for being a part of something larger than all of us. Last question, is the crowd so nice that they can do it twice? Wait for my signal. Live from Bloomington, Minnesota, you're watching... <laughs> Woo! Let's hand it over to the Daily Recap. Welcome to the Red Bull Daily Recap, everybody, for Friday. This is our last Daily Recap. Oh, our yay! Last one. I mean, oh. <laughs> bitter, bitter, sweet, sweet yeah. memories, almost in a way. Yeah. Right. But there was so much action today. It, Friday, Saturday are always bringing just lots and lots of great games. So let's just kick things off right away. Fu, you want to talk about a game that I think a lot of people in here enjoyed as well for yeah. different reasons. Yes, absolutely. So I was so enamored with the Celeste run last night. Oh my gosh, Gross oh, Lycan did an amazing job with his true ending run. You can see there in the farewell section. So this 
Davis is getting close to the end of the run itself after like an hour of incredibly fast, incredibly smooth gameplay. It was literally the type of game where you're like, I cannot take my eyes on this, like <laughs> off of this, off of this. Um, it's Look, I'm too distracted to even say words anymore, but uh, I thought it was <laughs> really amazing. Like the platforming is just incredible. And this game is quick to begin with, but seeing how fast like they're able to get some speed boosts and things in this, it's just literally feels unreal. So it was yeah. so much fun to watch. I, mean, I think they did dodge everything there too and get yeah. the Moonberry. Really incredible. Yeah, with all those electric barriers, it was, it was amazing. Yeah, well, let's kick it on over to ADEF now for... Yes. Pokemon, I mean, come on. Okay, so I love Pokemon, and this Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl run by our good friend Etiquette was so fantastic. What an excellent showcase. But there was something interesting that happened during the run. One of the commentators, Corvame, who is an excellent Pokemon speedrunner in her own right and has so much knowledge, brought up this whiteboard <laughs> that had all this... <laughs> there is an algorithm for calculating the experience curves for Pokemon in this game. And, I mean, you know, Pokemon speedrunners and glitch hunters and scientists alike have worked so hard to figure out all the we can and it's just awesome to see that we know this much we have <laughs> yeah. covered this much detail and data for calculating a game that is for children yeah, yeah it was heavily explained and i had no idea what they were saying but it was like very impressive <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, 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 look at this how much we i believe there's like terms yeah. on there like i I think, you know, and maybe yeah, think, yeah. that's how it works, and right. I don't know. You know how this is legit? The multiply symbol is a dot and not an X. That's oh. how you know we're in algorithm territory. <laughs> exactly. I love when speedruns are broken down like this, and it's not just like, oh, follow a note, use one move, that's good. <laughs> this is the super broken down version, super cool. All right, well, speaking of ridiculously complex things, <laughs> oh my God. we had some tasks show up today. I love how, like, when you watch the task block, you're like, okay, I want to see how ridiculous it can go for any given game. You take a game like Portal. Even when humans are doing this, everything's just whap, 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 shoop, 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 into this one, into that one. This is to the point of bonkersness and fast-paced to where I think even runners of Portal 2 would be like, wait, you're going to have to roll that clip now. <laughs> what happened? What just happened right there? Always uh, great to see when the task blocks show up. An amazing OOT beta showcase after that yes. as well. Yeah. Two really, really good inclusions this year. Absolutely. I, I super love Portal 2 in, in general, but it is kind of an, it, like a weird uh, genre, and a lot of people sure. end up throwing it in the FPS genre because where else does it go? Right. But there were two fantastic FPS games that we actually did get last night, and one of them was Doom Eternal from Mute. I absolutely loved this run. Uh, this trick that we're seeing here in the clip, it took a couple of tries. Uh, we're going to come right back to that clip in a second. Heck yeah. But it, it took a few tries for him to set up this mm -hmm. super precise uh, spot and then actually get a little like just a little bit of dash distance. They use some dash canceling oh to get a lot of mm -hmm. speed. Yes. Oh and then God. they were able to on top of that launch up into the air. We're gonna maybe see if we could play that again, but if not, everybody should go check out the run. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. So setting up precise location here and then going to just end up going with dash canceling to, to gain a lot wow. of speed and then oh. just right here get below the enemy oh, wow. knock yes. us all the way up with a melee. It is incredible, and just you get the big, you know, demon in in there as well. I love yeah, it. that's perfect. The idea that you have to be at one speed. specific pixel in a yeah. 3D game is like, it, yeah. it's unbelievable. And just right. getting to carry the speed, like the movement was just so smooth all over the place. Is yes, incredible. agreed, totally agreed. It was a great block in general. Yeah, and you know, you had a couple of FPSs that an absolutely stacked FPS lineup yes. last night. I believe we have another one here potentially from like Borderlands Two. We can talk a little yeah, bit about. Yeah, Borderlands Two was another one that was just smooth movement all over the place. This run was unlike any other Borderlands 2 run I'd ever seen before. It was all based around rocket jumping. Just look at the just wide open expanses that Deceptix is clearing here. In incredible. Oh my god. I would Lauren. love to see a breakdown of how much of the run was spent in the air yes. and how right. much was spent on the ground. There's just little taps on the ground, <laughs> yeah. bunny hopping literally across entire landscapes. Right. Super, super cool to see. Exactly. But okay, but in terms of like really fast like super high speed, we can't forget about Sound Voltex. Hello. Oh, oh yeah. Was amazing. Um, of course, I have to bring up the rhythm game because, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you but, got it. The, the rhythm games are always super fast. And this, I think, this clip had ooh. a BPM, uh, this song, a BPM of 666. So it really oh, yes. just fits right in there with Team Eternal. <laughs> yeah. and Look at their hands. Look at their hands. It's like... Yeah, Sound 
politics <laughs> players at this level absolutely like blow my mind. <laughs> I like can't even keep up. Even though I'm like, yeah, I know how it works. And then you get to this point and you're like, I don't know if my fingers could ever move that fast ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really incredible. The, the, the kind of like stances they take too. Like I, I swear their fingers are like six inches longer than mine because they're <laughs> yes. reaching different buttons. It's incredible. Go, There's go gadget, l- sound voltage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of rhythm games where I can say like, okay, what if I only focused on the far left button? <laughs> Could I even do that? And for that game, no. I couldn't have even done that. That's super, super cool. For this watch. one, it's like a knob or, yeah. Yeah. or yeah. something. Is, like yeah. Vegeta next GDQ. I'm just mad guitar. We're pray. guitar hero, only orange button. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait to see that. Somebody else to do the whole, all the rest of the thing. Well, uh, as we mentioned, this is our last Red Bull Daily recap for the week. There's still many, many awesome speedruns, but we wanted to give some uh, quick shout outs to a lot of the people that have been making this event possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. First of all, y'all watching at home and here in the audience, you're great. We couldn't do this without you. Woo! That's right. We love you, audience and chat. Yes. Oh. You are all very cute. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, but of course, we also have uh, like all the interview producers that are helping me over here. We have all of the amazing volunteers, our hosts, like Brutal Mello that we're seeing here. Uh, so many awesome people just working in the tech staff, working in uh, this, with the safety team, working with the cleaning crew to make sure that everything's safe and, and uh, you know, actually sanitized and all. Yeah, that. enforcement. We have, like, an amazing nurse. Hello. Yeah, Love yeah. Her. Yeah, there's just so many incredible people who work this event. And, like, I can't stress that enough whenever I'm talking to literally anybody I know about it, just how dedicated everybody here is. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Yeah, and just it enables all of the moments, like the whiteboards we were we saw and we were talking about and just all of the different uh, exciting points in all of these runs would not be possible without all of the help from everybody who works the event and everybody who is watching it and donating as well at home to a fantastic cause. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, And with that, I think there's one day left of speedruns. Oh my God. No. No. I know, I know. It's sad. <laughs> but we have quite a bit to still look forward to. What is everybody excited for? Hit me up, Spike. I'm going to kick it off with Metroid Dread tomorrow. Yes. Yes. Obviously, one of the most brilliant Metroid games of all time. My good friend Keiku is going to be running it tomorrow in the any percent, no major skips category. Please do not miss this. It is bonkers good movement tech all over the place. You will not be disappointed. Fu, how about you? Okay, I cannot wait for the... Because Zelda, again, just like the pre-show, hello, okay, I can't wait for the Wind Waker run. Link is going to do an amazing job. We know Link is like a GDQ veteran at this point and is going to handle this. Uh, It's all dungeons, right? And all dungeons run, so we get to see lots of Wind Waker, lots of content. I'm so excited. Nice. Adef, how about you? Okay, I got to shout out Elden Ring. I mean, we have two Elden Ring runs. The final bonus game, of course, is an Elden Ring any percent run, so get those donations in as that incentive opens. Uh, But also, we have... uh, That'll be by Hypersomniac. Really looking mm-hmm. forward to that. That'll be the finale, assuming you all meet the challenge, which I know you all will at home. Uh, but we also have Elden Ring All Remembrances, which is the longer category that shows off sort of all the major bosses. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll be by Catalyst, who is an absolute legend of Dark Souls. Yeah. Truly, like, when I think of Dark Souls, in my mind, it is synonymous with Catalyst. Yes, yeah, absolutely. A, you do not want to miss yeah. it. I think last GDQ, Cata was setting a world record in Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. Every yeah. GDQ week, like, even though he wasn't on the stage. <laughs> right, right. Uh, How about you? Well, for me, my pick is I'm giving shout outs to a good old friend of mine who has been wanting a really exciting category for his game in a long for a long time now. It's gonna be Zem with Blank yes. going commando. Wrench only. Wrench only is ridiculous. Yes. It is so hard. Y'all should tune in for that. That's gonna be later tonight. And uh with that, I hope everybody has enjoyed the Red Bull oh. Daily. Oh. Oh. We're done. You but guys. We're still going to catch some interviews from us for uh, the rest of the day, the rest of the event. And we, again, hope that you all are enjoying the exciting speed runs we have to offer. Please keep donating to a great cause. Dr. Zapporters really appreciates it. We love you, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh. Bye. Thank you so much to our wonderful interview team for that. And hello, everyone in the crowd and at home. This is Summer Games Done Quick 2022. From the commentary couch to the host desk, my name is Frozen Flygon, and I am so excited to be here. <laughs> we're just going to continue this Mario love we, as we're getting ready for our Super Mario World Relay. Be sure to get your donations in for some of the amazing incentives we still have open, like our Left 4 Dead 2 Last Stand Showcase. We are at 6666 out of $20,000 for that. So get your donations in.
Thank you to all who have been donating. Here we have $2,000 from Towson Force that says, loving seeing Mario do the limbo. Also looking forward to some Laughing Titus. Yes, absolutely. That was put towards our Final Fantasy X laughing cutscene, which is making amazing progress. We're at $8,200 out of $30,000 to see one of the very infamous cutscenes in Final Fantasy X. <laughs> there we go. We have $100 from Piano Man JV that says, Hello, all you happy people. Let's keep headed towards two million. Thanks for all you do. Thank you so much for your donation. We have $25 from Ted Just Ted 47 that says, My first SGDQ. I'm in the crowd for the third time this week. This is absolutely incredible. Shout out to all the volunteers back here who are keeping us all updated with wonder wonderful photos, videos, and news. Love you all. We have $500 from, from Osu Mario Kart Man. Thank you so much. 